evening, listeners and viewers. Welcome around to the Limerick Historical Society uh, programme. This is coming to a course again on Lermedia.tv. If you want to tune in to us, tune in. And also on Lermedia TV. And you can, I'm sure you'll find us on there. Uh, also, um, we want you to subscribe free. If you click the button down in the corner of your, your set, little red button to click as to subscribe. Doesn't cost anything, just click on the button. Uh, my name is Tony Brown, and I'm with me at uh, Tom Donovan. Uh, I shouldn't really call him my sidekick, but uh, mm. we kind of get through things on our own anyway. Anyway, first of all, good evening, Tom. Good evening, Tony. And uh, welcome along. Uh, yeah. Tom, first of all, the weather's very cold out there, and we're coming into today is the 31st of January. Yeah. We're heading into now, tomorrow is the first day of. What was known as Imbolog, which was the old yeah. Irish, I suppose, I suppose, name for spring, because yeah. there, were, there were four Irish seasons, which have kind of, um, I still go by, which is Imbolog in the 1st of February. Then you have yeah. the 1st of May, which is, uh, uh, what's it, Cassowin. Um, then you have uh, the 1st of August, which mm. is Lunisa. Yeah. And finally, you have the 1st of November, which is Imbolog. Oh, okay. uh, Christmas time, winter time, but of course in England they don't go by those; they go by the solstice. Yeah, they, they, they say there's a uh, winter, spring doesn't start till the twenty first of March. Yeah. The same if you notice in England, they don't say that um, they still kind of come summer up to the twenty first of September, whereas yeah. well, it's already gone for most of that stage. Well, in in, in Bullock is, is the forgotten one of the four you mentioned. Yeah, you know, yeah. like we we discussed before how. The Christian Church or the Catholic Church, Christian Church, um, were very clever. You know, they assimilated the, you know, the pagan uh, festivals, pagan sites, yeah. the holy wells, and they put Saint Bridget on in Bullock. They replaced Saint Bullock with Saint yeah. Bridget, um, and that's what they did. They gave Saint names, and uh, like it's all over. I, I was reading just about Glastonbury, uh, Glastonbury Abbey. There, it was, it was on BBC a couple of years ago, and. Uh, St. Patrick and St. Bridget are commemorated in that Abbey yeah. in Glastonbury. I was there, Tom. I've been there. Oh, well, have you? I was, yeah, yeah. But yeah. you're right. Sorry, go ahead. You're right in that. The yeah, St. Bridget. Uh, anybody on the 50 now associates rock music with Glastonbury? <laughs> but, <laughs> I think, I think I'm, I'm the only one in my, in, the, in my house, apart my my wife and myself, that hasn't been there. You know? <laughs> but I don't think they were paid. I don't think they were paying homage to the. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, and like I suppose in Ireland we associate Bridge and Kill there, you know, that's yeah, the first uh, of February, which is tomorrow, yeah, and yeah. the feast of St. Bridges, yeah, yeah, and uh, like you know, in uh, we, we mentioned there recently about uh, St. Ida or Ida and the yeah. place names in Limerick, like Kilidi uh, and Kilmedi, Meida. And in Kil like there's loads of places around the island called Kilbride, Bridges Church, uh, Kilbreedy. You know, there's I mean, it's probably twenty yeah, ar around the country. And um, but people think of it uh, as a as Bridges being an Irish saint, which she wasn't, because like, uh, we mentioned in Glastonbury, all over France, and as we as you've often mentioned, um, uh, the, the, I was going to say Churchill, um, Cromwell's. Eldest daughter married Ireton, and she she was Bridget. Yeah, yeah. 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 you think you think he'd, he'd have had a, a kind of a, a communist name for her, you know? It would, yeah, yeah. Or not Bridget anyway. You'd she, she was named after some Norwegian Saint Bridget, but they're all, they're all versions of the same thing. But I remember um, reading Kevin Danaher years ago, and he maintained that the the festival of Imbolc or Saint Bridget's Day was upheld in Kerry. They went around visiting houses with straw effigies of Breed Breed Oaks. Yeah, Breed Oaks. But the, what I didn't like is what they call them Paddy's Day. They started calling it the Biddy Festival, you know. Yeah. 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 And it was really I'd like, it, it's not keeping with tradition. And it's not, you know, I, I hate people calling, referring to Paddy's Day and Bridges yeah. Day, you know. But it's trying, to be, it's trying to be hip as well, you yeah. know. Yeah, yeah, no, you know that, that they want to keep the tradition. But another thing was, of course, uh, instead of going house to house, they went pub to pub, and Biddy's Day became a pub crawl. 
and and I, I think the change of the name to Biddy's Day and the calling to the pubs coincided. So um, you know, it, it became it lost it lost its meaning. You know, when you have a, when you have a pub crawl named in, in honor of a saint, you know, and I mean, like we have the very same with St Patrick's Day. We said it before. It's becoming a drink a drinking festival now, and like so, honoring our patron saint has has become a, a you know a swill fest. You know, people going around. Uh, doing pub crawls and drinking and making fools of themselves, but um, but getting back getting back to Bridget, you know when I, when I was when I was going to school, uh, the teachers used to make a Bridget's Cross, and I saw it during the week a lot of websites like the National National Museum and in Collins Barracks. I know it was a Mayo National Museum. They had videos on how to make a Bridget's Cross from rushes, you know. Um, so there's still children doing that, you know. Uh, and I think the reason they're putting them up in video is because children are not in school and they can't make them, the teachers can't show them. So they were doing these videos so teachers could send it out to the children and show them how to make them. Um, but, uh, you know, it's and good it's to see this. Of it now. And it's been lost of it over the years. Because what I blame for it is myself, and I've no qualms in saying this, some of the younger teachers now that are coming in basically have no interest either. And no. they're, not, they're not teaching the children properly. About our fellow breed, you know, it's a pity. I had, I had a few years ago. I had an, an, another program. I had um, Father Sean O'Dean from 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 Denstall, yeah, talking about St. Bridget. He was very good talking mm. about it because he died. He's dead now. About I suppose he did about four or five years now. But Sean used to, used to teach as well, a lecture, I should say, above in Mary Macklet. That's right. He was very good on St. Bridget. Although about twenty, God, nearly thirty years ago now. I got down a man by the name of Seamus O'Cahan from the folklore department. He yeah. came down and gave a talk on St. Bridges. And he was excellent. He's funnily, he started off talking about the Scandinavia. Yeah. And I said, where's he coming from talking about Scandinavia and St. Yeah. Bridges? And he went round in a full circle and finished up with Ireland. Yeah. And they explained all the things associated with her. Because about two weeks before that, I was talking to a very eminent bishop we had about Seamus O'Cahan and about St. Bridges. And he said to me about the, 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 the things associated with St. Bridges. And I said, well, I said, I don't know much. He said, I didn't learn much about St. Bridges going to school. But I know that the three things that I associate with her, when I said they were taken over by the church, is first of all, the St. Bridges Cross. Yeah. And I said, we, you know, and I know, I said, that that is older than St. Bridget. It's yeah. found in some old uh, graves, prehistoric graves, yeah. the crosses. So where did, where did the church find it? We don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. The second one is the Holy Wells. And of course, there was a cute move because people had to yeah. assemble the wells that they, they needed water. And yeah. it was a handy one by the church. Yeah. And the third one was uh, the, the story of the cloak. And I said... I said, I, I have a funny feeling, I said I was a kind of an hand grabber, you know. Mm. This man said to me, you're very dismissive. And I said, I'm just giving you my opinion, I said, and what I think mm. of the three things associated. But then you're getting away from, I suppose, culture and stories that were told. Mm. You know, and RTE had it for years and they kind of disowned it for a while. And they yeah. said, I don't even think it's even on now an RTE symbol. symbol. There's some yeah. kind of an extra one to have. Which is a pity yeah. because yeah. they were the one that really brought us to prominence when they had yeah. it as a symbol. Well, if you're relying on RTE to, to maintain our tradition, um, like I, I, yeah. I think TJ Carter have stolen RTE's clothes on that, on that yeah. one. And, and, yeah. and RTE are glad to be rid of it because they, they see it as a kind of a dowdy and you yeah. know, something not to be. And like, it's part of what we are, no more like, oh, yeah. we, you yeah. know. And, if you're you have if you have to take in your past and like when you go around Europe and different countries and a lot of them would be you know wouldn't have religion top of the you know they'd be fairly secular but they'd um they they all respect their tradition and the saints and uh, you know yeah, you, you know, it's even in, but the, the ones I remember going out frequently for a couple of years, even today I thought of it now, only that we're not allowed to go out. I would have gone today out to Kilcornan, which to me is one of the finest St. Bridget's Wells outside yeah. Stone Hall. And yeah. I was there a couple of years, different years, I should say. 
and there'll always be a crowd there doing the rounds. Yeah. Uh, going right round and round and round. And yeah. uh, then there's one down, of course, down in, um, down in Kildaimo, down in, down, I can't get the name of the house now, this minute, down in the That's but, right. Yeah, they usually have, have a prayer start at three o'clock. Yeah. Sunday, it would have been today. It is Sunday nearest to the, the fourth. Is that, is that a St. James as well? No, no, it's St. Bridget's. Down at the at the corner of, of Kennedy's house, just jogging in there to that house. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's a there's a, a, a statue there of St. Bridget's. Yeah, there's a St. James St. James as well back there as well. Is that there's a few yeah, yeah it's a few St. James as well as the yeah. Paragone, of course, and as, that sort of place is there's, 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 one, there's one in, in Clarina, just Oh, there is down, yeah, going on to Newtown, yeah. But yeah. but St. Bridget's Well in Kilcorner was always well attended. Yeah. And uh, yeah. but getting back to the making of the crosses and the, the, the breed dogs and the dolls, that mm. was never I never have the that in Limerick. I don't think no. they've ever even known in Limerick in the city. No, no, no. never have the it. And it no. was really a Kerry tradition. And in other no. parts of the country, obviously in Kildare. Yeah. Where uh, where St. Bridges is venerated, and of course you have the the, the, the cathedral there, which is St. Bridget's. Mm. And you have yeah. lots of church. And you have a St. Bridget's church, of course, you have Limerick above in St. Patrick's Road. That's right. It's yeah. unusual, really, in one sense. You know, you have a St. Yeah, Bridget's yeah. church. But yeah. there's much spoken of her now, really, I suppose. And children, children, it's a period they're not being taught in schools, you know, yeah, about yeah. the festival itself. Yeah. But even even the four, you know, the, the four you mentioned that start sound, Ingbo, all different ones. Like, you know, and, and like the reason. The, the pagan our ancestors who didn't have Christianity but you know worshipped they worshipped the water as a source of life Ishkabaha you know and then you had the um, uh, the various places but as, as we said before the church really um, you know instead of uh, ruling out something and making it forbidden they it took it off in their own they did they were killed yeah. doing that. Well, they did yeah. the same with, with the first of uh, with November when they brought in the holy souls in. Yeah. Yes, yeah. the first of November. Yeah. Then you have yeah. the climbing of the reek, St. Patrick on, on yeah. Dunasa, which is the yeah. first of August, the 31st. Right. Yeah. And the same in uh, in spring. When spring was kind of done where they brought in already, then you had the spring, the May altars brought in yeah. the first of May. But yeah. getting back to St. Bridges, that I was up a few years ago up in Fahart, because she's reputed to have been born in Fahart. Yeah. And there's a big, very big well there, and there are lots of stones there. They'd one particular stone. People think I'm making a laugh now, but they'd want you to lie down in it and to, to secure a backache. Yeah. And I went down in it and lying down, and there were a crowd of us there uh, looking at this. I was lying down the stone, and you're tell you, back you're back really getting up off it. Yeah. You know? yeah. And then another stone there to protect you from headache. And you yeah. put your head down. You put your head down into this thing. But it's one of the few, because as you know, most of the holy wells, the only cure from the from the, from the waist down, uh, from the yeah. waist up, I should say. Yeah. yeah, yeah. From, the, from the waist yeah. down. That's kind of bad, you know. It's yeah. always the eyes and the ears and the head and the yeah. back, you know. Because yeah. any of the holy wells you go to, you know. You never get a holy well cure with a big toe. Renting, you know, no, no, no. Any, any well, one of the things. See, there were, in ancient times, uh, there was a uh, Bridget was supposed to be a symbol of fertility. You know, yeah. the breed dogs they brought. If when they brought the breed dog dolls to the houses, you know, I suppose if if a, if a couple were married for a couple of years, they were welcome to see the breed dog because it brought fertility supposedly. You yeah, know, but Shem Sukhan said that. That was one thing he said, which I found very, well, two things, first of all. The one was okay, the other one I found hard to believe. The first one was, um, he said that first, the first of February meant springtime, spring for sowing, that women yeah. was were to get ready to work on the farm, work on the land with the yeah. husband. But yeah. he said that they were, they, were, they were really to have children finish with. You were to have your child, which I find very hard to... You know, to, 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 I don't know, it must be true. I, I, I believe it, yeah. But, you know, to yeah, have, yeah. Children, have your child before the 1st of February because yeah. you would need it to work yeah. on the farm, you know, from yeah. February onwards. You would need it mm. for the, not, the, the, the spring. I, I, I believe that. If you haven't grown up in the country, I believe that because, I mean, while, while children were important, the most important thing was the harvest, harvesting, you know. Set, and when you say sowing there, you don't mean needle and trade. Oh, yes. So, yeah. <laughs> In case, in case we're accused of being completely sexist, 
but 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 women did do like come back. Women did work on the land, you know. Um, they did like the, the, the chore, chores were divided amongst like women milk milking cows was was what women did a lot of the time, and the farmers uh, went they cut turf and they you know did more. The, the, milking cows and sowing seeds wasn't considered a manual work as in such as in the sense of a man, you know. And I'd, I'd believe that, like, that you got your um, baby, have, you, know, you had your babies so that you got out and, and, you know, there was no maternity leave, so you went out and you went, you, you, you had to help the... I remember him saying that, that the, yeah. the babies were supposed to have been born before. before mm. I didn't, that, that must be right for my father, anyway, because I was born in December. I was yeah. well out of the way, you know. Yeah, your mother your mother was ready to sow the crops. <laughs> Before February, before February came, but there's lots of stories. I thought years ago I could never figure out the difference between St. Bridget from Fahart and the one in Kildare. I thought there were two, but then it turns out she's supposed to have been born at Fahart, but then founded the the, the, the nunnery as in Kildare itself. And that story so- of, the, of the land, with the talk yeah. that she put yeah. down, he's supposed to have said, "You can have as much." Some prince will never know who it was. You yeah. have as much land as your cloak will cover. Yeah. Yeah. She's supposed to put down her handkerchief and it's supposed to, it's supposed to spread over the whole corner, you know? Yeah. yeah. So no, yeah. I tell you, I tell you, I, I'd say it's probably symbolic. Those stories, if they are, if they have any credence, would be symbolic yeah. of of her getting, you know, maybe getting a small bit and growing into a, a you know... Um, yeah. Maybe it was in dispute, or I don't know. But uh, I like the, 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 like there's been biographies written of Saint Bridget back into the seventh, sixth, and seventh century. Uh, but are they the same Saint Bridget's? Like you know, um, yeah. I, I seem, to think, seem to think that it's the same Saint Bridget, but uh, and like different places. It's like Saint Patrick, you know, different places claim Saint Patrick, and people and there's doubt. Did he ever go there? You know that. Like Patrick Swell and not Patrick in Limerick. I did a documentary uh, a few years ago. It's a pity they don't repeat it again for mm. RTE on St. Patrick. Yeah. And I took um, uh, Dana Sullivan, she was the reporter. I took her out to Knock Patrick and yeah. St. Patrick's Well in Limerick, uh, above in Singland. And we we're on about that. And I said, from Knock Patrick, he's a beautiful belly. He said that Bless Kerry, uh, Bless Kerry and Claire from the top of Knock of, uh, of Knock Patrick. Yeah. Then other people will tell it is from our Patrick. So, yeah. but you can see clear, quite clear, uh, you can see clear from the top of our Patrick, right across mm. the Shannon on the other side. And the same, you can see down into Kerry as well from the height. I, I believe it was not Patrick because there's a, there's a big rock there which he's two uh, prints of his knees in it, where yeah. he knelt down. You, you saw that, like, so he knelt down, he left his print on the rocks. Yeah, where he knelt down. Yeah. There's, yeah. There's, there's, there was one of them in England as well. But he yeah. as well. He was a very heavy knees. Yeah. I remember having uh, um, uh, I see his name, Lim Lennon, and he was on about St. Ida. Yeah. And he said, I think he's out in Torna Fuller that there's there's a place where there's two two prints again, St. Ida. Yeah. They, 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 they never dry. These yeah. things are never dry. But there's no one to do with They're down the edge of the river, you know. Yeah. And the secret was it never go dry. They won't dry. They won't dry in this weather anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but you'd wonder, you know, because uh, there were some people very dismissive of of some of the saints, you know, with the stories that yeah. they heard. But then, yeah. as you said, it is. I suppose it is tradition, you know. And well, was, it was the family. I was up in um, was it up uh, around Loch Derg one day, and I went down to Hollywell, and uh, what I was amazed was. The, the amount of rags and uh, bits, of, like, and it, there were new ones, like, yeah. so, like, it, they weren't, like, if they were there a long time, you'd know. The, the amount of rags and different um, ribbons stuck onto the, the, the bushes around the well, which is a tradition that I thought had died out, but people are still doing it, you know. Well, yeah, uh, and it depends if the well is looked at, what I mean by looked after, it is in a, a place where somebody would kind of care for it. Yeah, so, yeah. So have been, there used to be one out on the Ross Brian Road when I was a child, St. Dominic's Well, and it's mm-hmm. obliterated now, which is a shame. Yeah. And I remember I remember crutches there and a lot, yeah. lots of holy pictures and rosary beads. Now there was no rags as such there, but mm-hmm. you went down into a well, and uh, I remember there'd be lots of holy pictures there. 
and uh, mm. roses will be hanging down inside, candles and various things put in there. But that's gone out. Then there's one out there, uh, actually, it was uh, John Coulson took me to one out near, near uh, Newcastle West one time. I can't think what it is now. Is it near Kilcolman? There was a well there now, and it's full yeah. of, uh, of pieces of, of fabric. Well, I was, uh, talking, I was talking about that recently to, to Tom Toomey, but Kevin Danaher wrote a brilliant article uh, on the Holy Wells of Limerick, and Manish Joyce often referred to it. And he has mentioned, it must be up to 100 wells. I, I, can't, I, I don't know how many of them are there, but it would be a very easy job for the council even to put in postcodes for those wells and put in a kind of a marker on the wells just to show what they're even like, you don't have to put up signposts to show people, just put up loc a locator. And you can do, like I said to you before, there's new technology now where you can put in a barcode at a well and your iPhone will, or your sat nav in your car can bring you, if you put in that, uh, look it up on Google and it'll bring you right to where the well, well is. Now, it wouldn't take a lot of, and I know a guy who actually, did um, a walking tour of Limerick uh, on an app, it's called. He, like, and, and it was done with Satnav, and you walk around and it, it would give you the, like, you could use your voice or whatever, like a Satnav, or you could do it. And you could tell the story of that, like that building, or we'll say you have done Patrick Street, tell the story of uh, the Arthurs and the Arthurs Key or whatever, and how it was slabland. Little things like for visitors who could get and, and it, it would be proofread and checked to make sure it's correct. And so he had this idea that, you know, just do the center of the city and get a local historian to write the, the history and put it in. And he went to the council, I think it was 6,000 he was looking for, and they wouldn't give it to him. You know, I mean, simple, you know, and they, like they paid him wages to people going around with red coats or blue coats, or whatever. Um, like there are ideas like, and all you need is someone, in, and like you can't, if you go to a councillor, there's talk about putting on motions and going to the council meetings. But I think you need somebody with a budget, you know, a, a heritage officer who has experience in local history and knows the area, who can, like, like that idea. I'm not saying because it's my idea or anybody else's idea, like, but if they, you know, give them the idea and let them go ahead and have a budget. And like, just, like, that's what tourists want when they come in. Um, a couple of things in that. First of all, I went to the council to see uh, the acting city who refused to even see me. On four occasions I went to offer yeah. my services the time for, instead of those people going around, I was yeah. going to do it free in the mornings mm. and they refused to meet me. Yeah. And as regards you said, the council put up signs, as another member would say, I wouldn't hold my breath waiting for that. Yeah. Because yeah. you're flagging a dead house. They're just not yeah. interested. Well, I, I had a similar incident. I, I got into council one day. I was out one day and it was like a treasure hunt. My wife said to me, you know, how do you find your way around? And I, I, I consider I know West Limerick pretty well. And I drove from Glynn to Newcastle West and there wasn't one signpost along the road, it was, you know, up to Karakeri, up that way. So I rang the council and I spoke to the guy uh, and I said to him, he said, oh, he said, signposts are taking the past. He said, everyone has a sat nav now. You just put in your location. And I said to him, but uh, like, you must be, people might never say, no, no, I said, you know, so that's the attitude, like, you know, I mean, even if you were setting up, you need, you need re reaff reaffirmation that you're going the right way, like, you know, but um, like, and then you, you can get, so you come to a crossroads, there might be four signposts for B&Bs and, industri and industrial places and no sign for the town you're going to, like, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I, I saw a guy on, going back, when Gay Byrne was doing the Late Late Show, he used to have this innovation, he used to have these people doing inventions. And this guy came in, with an, he invented a very simple invention, a square pole for signposts, and you put the bracket on it, and you couldn't twist it, to the bracket. Whereas on a round post, you put a sign on it, and you can twist it around and point it any direction you want. But of course, he, his idea didn't go anywhere. But he didn't that. You have your army posts in England, and they never seem to be interfered with it. What? They wouldn't, they wouldn't post in England. Yeah. They never seem to be interfered with. No. Oh, I no. don't know. Yeah. But maybe they're square. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. Yeah. And they're, they're left alone. When I yeah. see you get clowns up and I move and think it's hilarious to, to turn them around. Yeah. They shouldn't be able, they should be welded anyway. You That's know, right. you wouldn't yeah. be able to yeah. move them. 
No, yeah, but I mean, but we'll go back to the Holy Wells. Like it would be a very simple. And and my, I was talking to Jim Reardon there last year as well about Jim. Like has a wealth of local knowledge, as you know, about about Kappa and the area. And there were several out, what they call outrages there. Um, you know, uh, white by attacks and murders. And he, Jim, knows where the sites are. You know, he took, he was taking us around and showing us where the sites are. And like that, it's a simple thing of putting down a little post and driving into the ground and putting a plaque on it. This is the site of where, you know, who was hanged or where Major Hare was shot. And, you know, and every town should have that. Like, and it's, but, but they don't have a heritage officer. No, I know. So, you, don't, what do you, don't, you don't even have a cruelty officer for dogs, no. no. Like, so, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't mind the heritage officer. I didn't, I, I didn't know that. I didn't know that until I saw a local councillor looking, uh, Danny McSweeney looking to point one. He's saying we should have one. I didn't even know we didn't have one. Yes. What I mean? Like, uh, it's a and pity. I, just, and do people people out there don't even know we don't have a heritage officer? Yeah, you know. uh, most people wouldn't get less anyway. You know, which is another thing. You know, but look at the, look at the number of, of of major towns and counties around the country don't even have a museum. You know, and uh, like when you look at the way Limerick treats the museum here, uh, you know, and moved it from post to pillar down through the years, it's it's kind of a you know, for a big city, it's, it's, it's only an encumbrance to them, like they, well, they're yeah. Yeah. they couldn't yeah. care less, really. And then they were to take over the Franciscan church, and they're, they're still not yeah. in the church as proper, they're still no. in the side. So yeah. it's just not interesting. Anyway, I would love to have all the councillors in front of me and to ask mm -hmm. them 20 questions on them, right? The whole, the whole 40 of them. And yeah. to ask don't be able to answer you. You might give one or two to my answer the question, but they wouldn't be able to know. Uh, I mean, it's 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 just pity, really, you know. Yeah. And the mayor should have some bit of the, the mayor should have some bit of knowledge anyway of the whole city well, and county. Well, they should have autonomy as well to be able to make decisions, you know, without having to go back to the government or anything. But anyway, we're we're gone a long way from the Holy Wells. Holy Wells. But, but I think it's important. Like our, once our generation is gone, people will know what a holy they'll think a well a holy well is a well with a hole in the, a hole in the ground like like they. Like come back to schools, you know, even children in localities don't know aren't aware of. We say Allah now the same Kolomogs well, you know, uh, and the site of that is actually you know it's in the graveyard, but nobody seems to know where it is. It's lost. It was covered in years ago, and I don't know where it is. And I'd say probably, there's one in Mungers. There's one in Mungers, and luckily enough, the yeah. the the, the Nessun, 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 yeah. He was able to get uh, a grill put over it, but it that's what it says, you know, there's just a bit over it. Yeah, but he, he has, like, the, the, he, he put pressure on the council to get the well, developers. He, he got that much done from, from the developer. But uh, at least, you know, it's it's signpost. And if you, if you only did that much with every well, you know, uh, you, they'll, they'll cite, oh, health and safety, people could fall in and all this sort of rubbish. But, but I mean, if you, you even to mark the site, is it's important, you know. Um, because it, it was an important part of our heritage and, you know, people just walk for miles to us, they made pilgrimages to... Yes, yeah. Yeah. I was on an outing about two years ago with the Shannon Society and we went to, which I never even knew existed, outside at the Limerick Inn Hotel. There's an old church inside near, most people know the old castle, the old McNamara ruin there at Cattle, yeah. Cattle Key Castle, the, mm. the tower house there. There's a church in there alongside that, completely covered in briars. Mm -hmm. And there's a well there. And I never realised that the amount of people, uh, Martin Breen was saying, they came out from Limerick, which we forget that, like, it's quite close yeah. to Limerick there, that they came mm -hmm. out. I forget what day they came out now. Or who, see, uh, see, it would be in Limerick Diocese as well, you see. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I forget that. Yeah. Because, yeah. Um, oh, God, we we'll confuse people now. People think mm -hmm. the diocese is with the counties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just have to believe yeah, that you know yeah, there's Pat yeah. in Limerick and the place yeah. like Castle Canada is in Killaloo, uh, yeah. uh Maru, and that uh, they're in Castle and Emily. You really yeah. get confused, you do as regards right. the diocese. Yeah. But that yeah. that well, that church and well is there, it's inside in the field there near that that tower house that's there. And it's mm. a pity that um that's not cleaned how, up either. How would you how would you drive to it now? You can't. We went in a field, we had to walk two fields to it from a road on the Cracklow side. Go up the yeah. side of the Limerick Inn, 
Yeah. Up to that road in the meet T junction. There, there was a, there's still the, the factory in there, just being old ball bearing factory. The ro the ro roller bearing, yeah. Yeah, inside there. You went in by that and you right. down the hill. You're heading down onto the main road, you're coming down two yeah. two um two fields to get to that town house. And um yeah. and then the church is extra, and there's a well there as well. And yeah. uh uh, uh, Patsy Perrell remember that he remembers like talking, we talking to him about it. he was there that night and yeah. talking about it, you know, and where mm. people came from all that area around there because that would have been something for people from Coon and that to go to, yeah, the nearest well to them, as such, yeah. you know, from yeah, that yeah. area around there to go to yeah. because and Patsy, you know, Patsy remember it, did yeah, oh, yeah, should sure. but you forget that there's no church in Coon either, they had to walk out of it up to, up to Mealy Church. Right yeah. up around the whole way, across the main road, we'll say, you know, and uh, yeah. up to the Chopton Mill. You could, you could roll across to Munger, you'd be uh, quicker. Well, yeah. you know, no, 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 yeah. Over into New Town. Because I remember, I remember all the people in Glynn telling me that people from Labashid and Kildyset used to roll across to Glynn, not from Asna, but for uh, harness makers and yeah. things like that. Because the tailor, right? yeah. tailor yeah. harness yeah. maker. Uh, that is true, uh, yeah. Because I. I I spoke to a man down at the very end of that machine, down at the fort. Down there, there's a, the old Napoleonic fort is there. Yeah. The Garden to Shannon, which again yeah. is another thing that's not, people don't give you notice there. It's a massive yeah. building. Structure. Yeah. You know, you, you blow up, the blow up one and the, and the opposite on the Talbot side. He is going up. Yeah. The two yeah. of them were facing one another. And yeah. uh, but, uh, there was a lovely man lived there, Barney Maloney was his name, right down the edge of the Shannon. And there's a castle there as well, an old rural did, castle. Did, did we meet him in 1995? When we did. We did. We, we did. Uh, yeah. And yeah. I said to him about, it's a long way from here to Kilrush. Yeah. You wanted something, you know. He said, you're mm. talking to me. He said, I wouldn't go to Kilrush. I said, what would you do? i go to Glynn, he says. I yeah. said, you go to Glynn? I had visions of him coming back into a town in a house and town. <laughs> he said, so look, he says, Glynn's only over there on the corner. You yeah, know, yeah. I'd be over, he said, in 20 minutes to Glynn. You know, so a, a fellow from Labashida said to me, by the time you'd catch the horse and tackle him and, uh, you know, to go to Ennis, the, 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 he said, by the time you'd catch the horse, tackle him and get the, the whole the whole thing set up, you'd be rode across the Glen, like, you know, before you start out to all Ennis. And yeah. he said, and uh, the Captain Shannessy, who owned the pub in Glen, told me, you know, you'd look out the window and you'd know the Clare people were coming up the town because they didn't use, they didn't use the footpaths. They walked in the middle of the street. Oh, no, there was little oh. traffic at the time. But he said it was a, a feature. They always walked up the middle of the street. Yeah. Uh, you know, why I, why I don't know. Maybe they, they wanted not to walk on the footpaths, but uh, that's one thing he told me. But, Isn't it uh, really happily? Well, the same happened actually in Kona now, to reach in the winds ago, a new town. There was a lot of communication across the river there, which yeah. especially with managers. Oh, yeah. Like, that. You know, there's names, the, like there's names in, in Clarina now that I know, like McGregor. It's Six Mile Bridge. They yeah. came from Clare. They married it across. Uh, there's lots of lots of concert. There's lots of names, concert, like Clare names that you know around Clareina. And the same in, in uh, Glynn, a lot of people like they, they did a lot of trade. Like, I remember my father told me there was a uh, um, a calf sale down, and it was held specifically for Clare people uh, down to the shore. And they'd row across and they tie the calves' legs because in case they'd put a hole in the boat and go back over with them. And there was. And, and and they knew the people across the way. I, I said to you before, my father would say, "Oh, Johnny Hare has his hay he saved her." You know, across the way, they'd know the fields, and you know there was kind of a, there was more connection. Like we have a ferry now uh, going over and back, but there was more connection between the people back then. And they they played football games. Um, Clare teams came across <clears throat> at the beginning of the twentieth century. They'd row across. I mean, they'd row across. They're talking about. Like it makes me laugh now, these professional soccer players, and they lose and they say, oh, the players are tired after playing the game the week before. And like uh, these fellas would row across, uh, tug out, play a game of football and row back home again. Like, you know, and, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. yes, right. But, uh, and I remember, uh, what's your name? There another man that's got, to, as they say, gone to his reward. I've been honest with you, nobody's saying he died last week. They said, now he okay. passed away. Yeah. Passed over. Well, yeah. Oh, it's passed over, you know. Uh, <laughs> and like, you know, please look, if you say now somebody, did he die though? You know, like they, they look at you kind of. Uh, I probably have said, did he die though? <laughs> yeah. And yeah. what did he die? If he died with Charles, uh, yeah. <laughs> or, or, 
Are you very, are you very, are you very your brother? Did he die? He said, I'm say that. He said, when somebody said, that woman up there buried her husband, so my brother said, she did. You know? yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but as he got in, oh God, we're, we're digressing again. But like yeah. that, the, 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 what we talk, I forget what we were talking about after that. What were we going to talk about the other No, I'm a player and, and people coming over and back. And, yeah. and you know. We've gone past that. Yeah. <laughs> We were going to. Oh, but you said you knew, you knew a fella. You knew a fella, and he he was dead. Yeah, what? Uh, you said you knew somebody. But he, he died, and you said then you went on talking about the way people said. <laughs> that's the, that's the, oh, I'm right. Do you know what I was going to talk about? It's actually coming back to me now. Didn't I? Uh, Mick O'Brien. Mick was a great handballer. He was an Ireland handballer champion, and oh. Mick told me that he drove uh, uh, several times, but I know some of them I remember. And one was he was playing a handball game in Cavan. Yeah, having town, they left Limerick in the morning. <laughs> About oh. half seven, half yeah. seven, stopped on the way up. He said, and brought their own sandwiches. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> greaseproof paper. Yeah, and he said, he took out the sandwiches. They had two or three sandwiches somewhere on the way up, and got into Cavan Town and finished them off. Didn't play the yeah. game, but and then had to come back again. I had to stop yeah. in the pub, then coming home. You know. Yeah. All the way up the whole way to, to play a game yeah. and to bring your own food to, to, to well, walk and play a handball above the cabin. It's hard to well, believe. I was talking to the girls on the week, and a well, girl, she's a woman, and she told me she remembers her father was fond of the drink, as they say. Like nowadays, he'd be an alcoholic, she said, but he, he does this fond of drink. And she said, she remembers they'd be piled into the car. There was about six of them there. And he'd bring all bottles of lemonade to them and packets of curry creams and biscuits. Okay. And she said, they'd be like, it's in the car for hours. He'd meet her inside and he'd forget about them. Like, at, in the early hour, like he'd give them. And she said, they'd drive home. he'd drive home the doctor and she said, and he tanked up. And she said, like, there was no drink and drive wasn't there. Like, you know, how they, how they survived. Like home she, pigeons. So they, they're like home and pigeons where they were able to find their way home. You know? yeah. My uncle used to go into a pub uh, where they'd be cycling. And uh, the sapphire set was probably had a half pint in the pub. It just, it's still there. It's now called uh, the Drumorian. It used to be O'Connor's. Yeah. There's a car park there now. But I remember Gates going into that pub and a, a, pathway, a pathway going into the pub. And mm. it stopped there. We were going to Ring Milan uh, for yeah. a, a Sunday picnic that I hated. But anyway, and it stopped there. And like that, I get a bottle of lemonade. And it always seemed to be fine. And you sat mm. outside and waited for uh, my uncle to come out and his partner, um, uh, Mickey, Mickey, oh God, I can't give his name now this minute, Mickey O'Mahony. Mickey yeah. walked out of what was known as the Nut and Bolt, Irish water right. paddocks there on the dock road. Yeah, and, yeah. But Mickey and himself used to cycle. They cycle ahead. So there's, um, they'd, have, <laughs> they'd have the primus ready, but it's, it's <laughs> on the boil by the time. Yeah. The crowd would get told, you know, yeah, yeah, and there yeah. were certain people um, kind of allowed to go over the bike, so they yeah. keep it off the road, you know and that. Yeah, yeah. But Mickey and 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 my uncle would be down first, and uh, they stopped there for uh, either a half point or a point. I couldn't tell you, yeah. but uh, he was about an hour and a half ahead. Mm. To go down to uh, have the maybe they got down there to make the tea. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's time to go home, you know. Yeah, yeah And yeah. Uh, I sat to sit in the back of the bike, you know. And uh, no, he just sat sitting the bike. Just when he got, he got an NSU quickly, which was a big step up from uh, my voice. There was yeah. only one side on it, and mm. so Mickey, what, what was Mickey going to do then, as his his partner? He mm. was meeting below what used to be Barry Sharp, which is a shame that the front of it is only there now at yeah. the end of the Long Avenue. Yeah. Mickey would wait there for him. And my uncle was coming along with me on the back, sitting on a, on a saddle with a bit of a cushion on it. And yeah. I'd keep my legs out. There was no, there was no rest for your legs. Yeah. So by the time we got down to Ring Island, I was walking like a cowboy. And by the time my legs were straightened, it was time to go <laughs> home again. You know, yeah, go yeah. back again, you know. But yeah. Mickey would hold on to his shoulder and he'd pull him all the way out along the dock road. Yeah. And yeah. he three wheeling the bike, just hold on to his shoulder. Yeah, his yeah, yeah. But they had to stop the Clarina in case there'd be a guard around. And mm. uh, he cycled through Clarina and meet him at the far end. Yeah. And put him again. And mm. the next thing they was to avoid Paris Kenry. So they yeah. went down 
the road down by, by St. Dalton's well, they're down Port no, Dalton's, yeah, down the back road. Port yeah. Palace Kennedy didn't you see? Yeah. But you can yeah. still hold on to your shoulder going down the whole yeah. 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 You know, yeah. they seem to have done that for years, you know. Yeah. There was a man in Glen actually talking about strange. He 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 maintained he couldn't afford a car. He was a small farmer. Uh, he, was, he was small as well. He was yeah, small. Yeah. yeah, but he was. He's he's a small kind of a bit of bug. Yeah. and he was married to. I won't say her name because I'd give his identity. Yeah, away, yeah. Well, I... he he bought a, an old car, a scrap car in Adams's, and took the front wheels off it, and got the, the local got Kevin Reed to put, to put a hitch on the front of it. And he had a tractor already, like a grey mare, and he used to pull the hitch. He put the hitch onto the tractor. He put the children and the wife on, in the back, and he'd come down to mass uh, with the family, with the with the. And he he needed no um, driving license for no tax because it was a trailer, you know. No, whether it was with Hindle or not, and he they go off they go off downtown then and they go home again, and then when he's coming, he had a. A cushion made like there's two arms in the back of a tractor for lifting up um, plows and different things. And they're called uh, hydraulic lifts. And he got a timber seat made, a throne for the wife with a cushion in it, and she was sitting in the back. But um, he he actually he braked one day and she fell off it, and he, she she fell into no she fell into the dike at the side of the road. Have But no, 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 he can't. Do, but the thing was. He was gone, so he didn't realize she was gone for about half an hour. And he turned around and um, he made a, he made a fellow. Like, oh, what? You talking about to see? Yeah. Well, he, wasn't, he wouldn't be talking to her anyway, but, but he looked back and she was there, she was gone, as they say. And he turned around and he met a fellow coming home the Greenway. And he said to him, Any sign of my. Yeah. Like, you know? Yeah. yeah. And, uh, the man hadn't seen her either, but he eventually went down in front of her. But uh, he was. He was what they called a character. I got actually, um, what's his name? Turtle Bunbury, a name to, to conjure with, as I say, uh, yeah. to do an interview with him. You know, he did his last, uh, but Turtle was fascinated with this guy. You yeah. know, he made some, you know, uh, tell him, yeah. he's, he had some stories to tell him, like, you yeah. know, but uh, and, uh, they're characters. And like, if you, if you tell young people that now today, that they, they think you're making it up. Well, you know? well, yeah. Us, yeah. Stories I've heard over the years. You reminded me there of talking to Captain Captain what's his name in the pub, Shanahan, isn't it? Tennessee. Tennessee. That yeah. pub in Glen, it's a lovely pub. It yeah. like it's still the well, it isn't surviving now. It's uh, you know at the moment. No, no, and it does worries but it love at all. And like it's it's it was famous recently for um a pop singer going in there. She was down, she mentioned it. She was staying in Glen Castle, um can Oh name. yeah. Uh she got she got engaged there, I think. Um, she's uh, she, uh, what, no, no, something something like that. Uh, she's uh, she's famous, but I don't know who she. I can't think of her name. But she got. It means you like Daniel, is it? No. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, no, no, not not that not that famous. I, I think I think of it may go on, or um, but Taylor like, Swift. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. No, just tell me. I, and uh, some someone got a green lotto ticket, yeah, uh, and, and put Taylor Swift Hollywood on it, and <laughs> it went viral on the internet. People believed that she bought a lotto ticket. I used to eat viral when I was young. Did you ever eat viral? Yeah, it was okay. It was like, it was like, it was like it was a, it was a, it came in a kind of a brown jar. My yeah. aunt get into chemist. It was about four shillings, a big box, big box for it, and uh, it was a kind of um, it was supposed to. Be, it was supposed to be a kind of a vitamin thing. And yeah. uh, it took it, it was, in, a, in a it, was like, it was like it was like the Ireland coffee with vitamins in it. <laughs> remember the, remember the, was it Ireland was the black the black coffee? The Ireland coffee was liquid, yeah. It was a liquid stuff. Well, that was disgusting. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. this is disgusting. But, no, but this viral now was nice. But you yeah. remember, let me take one spoon of it at a time because you could yeah. go through it too fast, you know. I don't know what it even was, but that was viral. But uh, they're using viral now for a different expression altogether. Oh, yeah. 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 And like uh, the other thing I, I used to love when I was young, my younger brothers and sisters get it for hiccups. Um, um, does it, it came in a bottle, it's clear liquid. And they give you, they give uh, children. Great water, was it? Great water, yeah. No, say good am. Yeah. 
There was a there was a brand name on it. I can't think of what the brand name was. No, it was a great bottle. Yeah, I remember but, it, but but I, I, I realized later just as well I didn't drink because it's it's probably ninety percent alcohol. Alcohol and probably some kind of medical sins or something. Yeah, something yeah, like that in yeah, it. Yeah. I used to get another thing called and my aunt used to get another lovely yellow thing called Angel's Emulsion, and it came in a long tin bottle. It was yellow mm. in color. What a lovely stuff. And yeah. then what's even far? You just took it, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Could be yeah. poison, you know. She's like, I remember going to the dispensary. You'd go to the dispensary years ago for, for a bottle of something, whatever was on to you. It could be a cough lead or sore throat. Mm. And you got this thing out the hatch. The hatch was pulled up, boom, yeah. you know, and you just a brown yeah. the bottle was pushed out, and you just took it, the shutter went down again like lightning, you see. Yeah. And yeah. all it was on it was the mixture. Take yeah. three times a day it was written. Now. This all was on it. You could have been taking, you could have been yeah. taking paraffin oil for all you know, but you yeah. took it because you got it from the doctor said you would have this. And yeah. all I said that it was the mixture. Take yeah. twice a day or three times a day, one yeah. teaspoonful. And you took yeah. it and you totally you took it. And you never asked any questions what's yeah. in this or anything. With, you know? um, in the country, the chemists used to have bottles. And yeah. They, they had bottles for different like cough. There was no thing as chesty cough or. or or, or, no, or dry. Just a cup. He had a he had a mix, and you don't like you don't know. It's probably treacle and water. Yeah, licorice. Yeah, uh, uh, yeah, licorice. Licorice yeah. and a lot of those things. But people swear, as they say, swear by this. Swear bottles. by it. Yeah. Oh, so yeah. the, then, slow and My uncle used to use slow and yeah. for um for uh, pain your back. You know. <laughs> <laughs> what, the, what he was what was inside in slow and You know. Yeah, my. My grandfather used to have a bottle of Pochino. He said it was for the greyhounds and himself. Yeah. And he used to get uh, gout with his knees. And that reminds me, we had a teacher, Mrs. Fitzgerald, and you you put your hand up, Miss, can I go, can I go? And she said, gout is a pain in your back, you know. <laughs> but he's, he's the, the smell of the Pochino, he's rubbed on like for um, for gout. He's gout in his legs. Oh, he, but, but the thing is, if he stopped eating fat bacon, he'd probably have no go. Yeah, like oh. the two, yeah. Probably. Uh, yeah. There's a few that have been the rich man's disease at one stage. Yeah. Now, you know, yeah. there's, there's if, you eat, if you had a lot of pork, like, if you were eating bread and, uh, bread and jam, you get you wouldn't get it. But the poor, rich food like pork and, uh, like I, I was telling my wife the other day, like, she, not, the fact she didn't grow up in Ireland, she wouldn't believe it. Like, but my grandfather's cook a pig's head. And she said to me, oh, yeah. I'm eating. Don't it? And the and he was giving me a bit. It was absolutely beautiful, like you know. I, if I didn't know what it was, but, <laughs> but the 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 Coleman's mustard, the jar wasn't wasn't uh, strong enough. So he used to mix up his own powder. You know, he'd get the mustard powder, and he'd mix it up uh, to have it with the, the pig's head. And but uh, I know, but uh, any part of the, you know, yeah, you see yeah. well. And I remember Kevin Helen coming to a meeting one night and he was asked Jim Kemi something. And he, he said, he went down to Jim Kemi's house and I couldn't be bothered asking him. He said, he said, yeah. Kemi was inside having a row with a pig's head. Yeah. Kemi was probably yeah. <laughs> eating this. Back in, back in the, like, up to the 60s, people, like, we killed the pig at home and there was not, like, you know, the story, nothing, nothing was wasted, like, you know. We no. used to, we used to make a ball out of the, the bladder. <laughs> yeah. the, well, he said yeah. that. that was a saying in the that the only about the pig, the only part that wasn't eaten was the, was the, the grunt. Yeah. Yeah that's, yeah, that's the only part that wasn't eaten. Was, I do, I think. There was a, a shop that was famous for Limerick people on just in Clare Street, on the right hand side as you were called, Mary Ann Welsh's. Yeah. So it took me long now where there's a carpet place and roughly along there too was Mary Ann Welsh's. But Mary Ann's oh. used to be packed on a Friday night selling pig's toes. Yeah, it was known for whatever way she cooked them, and there'd be a big queue outside the place. But yeah. Marianne was doing it for years. But finally, when she finished up, when she got sick of the whole thing, she wasn't that too old anyway, you yeah. know, for it. And she stopped selling the toe, but she put up a sign and she she just signed up the thing no, no more toes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was up the years, no yeah. more toes, you know, because people were still kind of going there, you know. They was, went to I, holiday. I was in Galway, it's only about. 15, 20 years ago, and I, I saw uh, kind of a, it's like a chip wagon, but to, they had a sign up, uh, crew beans, 
you know, mm-hmm. and to, yeah. like they wouldn't put pig's toes up for crew beans, and people are eating them because that would be kind of nice, sir. But that's like yeah. packing the tripe in the rick, the same yeah. with the amount of packing the tripe that was sold. Mm. Uh, mm. Especially men, there was a kind of a, a kind of a fad that they had it for Saturday morning. Yeah, kind of. Uh, I don't know why it, 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 that tradition came about, but mm. uh, packing the tripe was uh, was. I had to go down for packing the tripe down yeah. to a place. Uh, I could I still can identify it down in uh, just off at local street. Uh, it was known as Tracy's, but there was a Mister oh, yeah. Milan that ran it. And mm. he would just throw it up on a scale. You yeah. just go in and ask for, I forget, I had to go down the whole way there and I hated the thoughts so far away from me at the time. Mm. But I went down on a Friday night, get the bus down and the bus home. My aunt would send me down for it. Now, I wouldn't eat tripe, mm. but I would eat a uh, packet. And I think if it now, I wouldn't eat it. But I'd yeah. eat it that time, I'd eat it raw. Yeah. And what it was, was, was uh, blood, uh, pig's blood mixed up with some kind of spices and other few things. Like, 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 like black pudding. Yeah, like black yeah. like pudding. Or haggis, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. Uh, like that, uh, uh, Pete would eat that. They loved it. And there was, a, there was a poor man's version of it then. It was known as, um, as uh, tripe, just poor man's tripe. It was made from p- uh, a bit of small bit of potato, mainly bread and onions and a few other things all mixed up. I yeah. know that's disgusting stuff, and mm. I would eat that at all. Now, but that was another kind of a type that was yours. I, swear, I was talk, talking to my wife, her nephew was home from Australia, and she cooked breakfast for him one morning. And he uh, he got and she put it out on a, a platter, you know. Yeah. So he, he took the sausages and the rashers, and he said, Oh, there's black and white pudding there as well. He said, This, lo- this looks nice, you know. He took it out and put it on his plate, and he said to me, uh, nice. he said, what, What's this? And I said to him, do you really want to know? He said, and he kind of looked at me and I said, it's, it's uh, pig's blood. <laughs> he, I could see the, his own blood draining out of his face as I told him. He put it, he put it back in on the side plate and that was the end of it, you know. <laughs> yeah. But it's funny when you know, like, I suppose there is an old saying, but the eye doesn't see, the half doesn't feel, you know. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if, you, like, if, if, if I said nothing to him, if I said that's, that's you know, uh, yeah. I don't know, uh, non-meat, like we said, yeah. vegetarian, a vegetarian or caviar or whatever it yeah, was. Yeah. But, well, I mean, like I was telling, there's a guy asking me re- recently about killing pigs, like, you know, and he, I'd say he's, he's top these seven or eight, like, but he know he didn't know. And I, I told him we kill, we kill pigs on the farm. And, and, and he said, where did the butcher come from? And I said, we didn't have a butcher. I said, it was a, uh, it was a, a, a neighbor, a next door neighbor, I said. And he had, he, had, uh, he had the implements. He said, Did he shoot him? I said, No, 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 no. I said, He had a, a, a hammer and spike. Oh, gee, he couldn't, like, and he said, Why would, I said, First of all, he, he had to. Uh, now, hold you a minute, though. Do you realize that you're talking to a little town here? Uh, I yeah, don't know either. <laughs> I don't think right. I want to know. Yeah. But anyway, you had to hang up the, the this this I'm getting to the the puddings. You ha- you hung up the kid the, the pig uh, after you killed him. I've I've left out the killing part. And the the, the, the my mother would come out with a, a big bat a, a, a galvanized bat and to hold under the pig. And she went off with the with the blood, and she made the puddings then. And the the pork steak was taken out, and neighbors got got some of the pork steak, and. Uh, my father told me when he was young, they killed a pig and a neighbor came in and he was a young fellow. He was only about six or seven. And my father, my grandfather said to him, are you okay? And he said, I, I'm fine. He said, I was told to come back and pret nothing and I might get a piece of pork steak. <laughs> 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 they, they had, there was the herd, the big squealing. So he was yeah, sent back. Yeah. Yes, yeah. in the world. Oh, yeah. But like that, you know, I, mean, you know, I read Lenin says that there were, uh, was it, there were up to 6,000 pigs often in some weeks killed in the week. Yeah. 6,000. But you look at the amount of factories, like, yeah. you know, we did a walk, walk there last year, you know, yeah. uh, you, like, in this, they went, in, like, in later years, they went out of the city, like, but you had Madison's, O'Mara's, all the pig factories inside, like, you know, yeah. and all people, like, um, People who, live, who lived in the city, like John Collins, now remember it was yeah. that night telling me John died there last year. Uh, John saying, um, like he could hear the squealing of the pigs. I remember yeah. hearing the squealing myself. 
you know, especially at the side in uh, what was known as Ladies Lane, which was a lane where they ran up the side of Matheson's, take you out onto Parnell Street. And you'd hear them in Amara's uh, going up Thomas Street even, uh, where the big building is there now in the centre. And you forget, I mean, it's coming down in trucks, the trucks pull up outside, you know. But John, I remember John Collins said to me, you know, people thought the pigs squealed. The pigs were squealing when they were being taken off the trucks and put into the factory. But the squealing stopped when they were killed. It was only, you know, uh, <laughs> but as well as that, animals, like, I remember uh, uh, take, uh, driving a cow into a butcher for my father, a heifer. And um, I got as far as Glynn and went up, there was a back alleyway up into the butchers and the cow wouldn't move when she went up the alleyway. She would smell the blood. And I remember Paddy Stack, the butcher, had to come out and he had to more or less push her and coax her. And then she got her in like, they, they, they can sense, you know. Oh, yeah. I think we'll go back to talking about Holy Wells, you know. I, we, no, we I, I, we, our next thing we'll talk about vegetarianism. Really? <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, when I'm next door to a vegetarian, I'm not the full thing, <laughs> I'm next door to it. I wouldn't eat, uh, I used to eat pork steak, I wouldn't eat it now. You, they, they go off. Well, my, my daughter was doing a, a, a Zoom cookery thing this morning when I got up. She was doing, and it was girls from Canada, Australia, America, England, and Ireland. All they do this kind of on computer, like, you know. But she made sa- uh, sausage rolls without sausages. And they were, and I said, to her, Are they vegan? She said, No, they're vegetarian. But they, 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 they taste all right. Like, or she said, You won't eat them anyway. She said, they there's no meat in them, you know, but... Um, I hate cookery programmes with a vengeance. Oh, I hate oh, them. I can't understand. There's only certain ways, there's only one way to cook things and they'll be given away at Christmas time, they'll be talking about cooking turkeys and you do this with it and do that with it, you know. But what's, yeah. I often wonder, what's the point of going to all this bother, you know? Yeah. Just put him in the oven. For, for 15 minutes. Yeah. Like, I just not that a rubbish time, but... Like, but, but the best story I heard was... Uh, <laughs> A guy told me he his wife came home or well, it was his wife or girlfriend came home one night and she was afraid she'd miss uh, some cookery program and she got a takeout on the way home <laughs> and sat down and ate it while she was watching the cookery program. <laughs> so, you know, uh, you, know, uh, you, know. You, can imagine, you can imagine it, like you know. Yeah, of course. Somebody said one time, it's. I think somebody said it was chewing gum for the eyes. That, that oh, kind of yeah. Yeah. That's how it is. I mean, they, yeah. just, they cook the same things and programs all the time. And terrible rubbish, you know. The, I mean, the same people who would frown at eating, you know, peck and tripe or whatever, are watching these uh, celebrity love island. Celebrity, no, celebrity. It's people lost in islands and they're made eat bugs and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, we're, 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 we must check now. How do we get from Holly Wells onto uh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, cookery programs? Yeah, yeah. Oh, God. But, it, but, but like, it often reminds me, like, uh, uh, I don't consider my, I am old, I suppose, but to some people, but like, even for the last 20 years, you know, when I was 20 years younger, meeting people and they're not knowing you know a lot of country, things that happen in the country like saving hay cutting turf uh, killing pigs like there's loads of different traditions that have died out going to the creamery you know um uh, like t- fa- farming methods and all that uh, like from the 70s on that have changed and pe- like we, they've been they've been lost like you know just yeah just, yeah. yeah, and actually, the, my <laughs> brother-in-law messaged me from Australia there. Um, David Shaw Smith died. From, uh, in, uh, he used to make oh, the hands program. The hands program, yeah. And my brother-in-law was home from Australia. And, like, I suppose he grew up in a kind of an Irish area in Australia, but he bought the entire box set of hands. And he went back and he showed them to his daughter, who was born in, like, he was born in Redden, Australia. But he showed them to his daughter. And she went out and bought the box set, you know, on the string to that online. And she watches regularly, you know, because she said, like, you know, it's, a, you know, even weaving and... Uh, you yeah, know. the terror down in Tullow, in County, uh, County Waterford. Yeah. Yeah, that Tullow is about yeah. is it two Tullows. But, um, yeah. and he made a suit and, and they went back, I think, to some of those programmes. 
I think he's yeah. long dead now. His son took over the business, but mm -hmm. uh, to show that, so what's his name did most of the narrations and those, uh, then Kylie, he did ben most Kylie, of the yeah. narrations and, and those hands I remember, I, I remember so, him as son, son de Miscellany. He, he had a fantastic voice. Oh, lovely ben, voice. Ben, yeah. ben de Kylie, yeah. yeah. And I was talking, I was talking here when I was with Pat Valley, we were talking about the singer that died, um, Brian Carl from yeah. Roma, and mm -hmm. he was his uncle. Uh, he was Brian Collins. Ben Kylie's Brian Collins' mother was Kylie. Oh, yeah, she was Ben Kylie's sister. And then oh, yeah. Kylie did a program a few years ago on RTE, and he said his, his people. He lived in a place called Drum Quinn, which isn't far from Oma, really. But he said this on the program. He came down to Limerick. He said his people came from Limerick originally. They went north okay. at some stage. Well, and Kylie's, name, name like Kylie, you'd imagine. Yeah, it's not a name associated with north. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he are, but he said his people anyway came from somewhere down in County Limerick. And he said on the program that he met a man by the name of uh, Mannix Joyce, mm -hmm. who showed him where these Kylies came from at the time. Yeah. Just on the program, I remember. And yeah. he, did, he mentioned Mannix Joyce on the program, you know. Mm -hmm. And he said this, that's where his people came from. He explained in how they went north up to Drum Quinn in County Tyrone, where yeah. Brian Carl is from. But as I said, it's only a few miles outside Oma. But that's yeah, where Kylie was from. He must have some connection with Carrick Macross because he wrote a book. Uh, I have it somewhere. Nothing happens in Carrick Macross. Bendy Kylie wrote it. Yeah. No. no. Maybe maybe he just picked the, the, yeah, the title. People have to pick places out. He he had, a, he had a beautiful accent, you know. I mean, a real like, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 He's dead quite yeah. a few years now. Here, you know. Oh, he is. Yeah, yeah. He's a very good, well, good writer, like. Yeah, and I remember, he and he had a real slow kind of voice. You know, yeah. suitable for hands. You could hear you know. him, you could understand him anyway. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. When he yeah. spoke, you know. But I like that. But he was an uncle of, of Brian Carl, who's dead. Brian was only dead about, so he only did about four or five months now. That's all. That's anyway. all yeah. Yeah. anyway. The book, the book, I remember him seeing him very burning with the Buckaroos. Brian Carl and the Buckaroos. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, started, yeah. he started out with the, with the Platters, who became the yeah. Platters men. You know, this was yeah. what you been saying now. I know. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. We were talking about hens and like all the programs, like you know, instead of showing cookery programs that they better have shown programs like that, you know. Yeah. Just, yeah. And there was a series done as well on houses in Ireland. And yeah. I I think that Mike Murphy did the thing in that because I remember in that program they actually went to Greenmount House outside. Mm. And I remember um the Earl of Harrington as known locally as Earl of Harrington. I remember him sitting down, and that was one of the first. It's a modern house now, and it was one of the first to have uh, aluminium windows in it. There was a smaller mm. window. And in that program, they explained all that, but there were, God, it's about 50, the ones of 50 years ago now. Uh, this is where the, the race course is now outside, it's Greenmount. Yeah. And uh, well, Lad Harrington was explaining about the house and about the size of the, the foyer and the house itself. Oh, it's mm. massive, the, the entrance hall going into the house. Because yeah. I brought a group to see it about, God, it would be 45 years ago now. I yeah, brought yeah. a group there to, to see the house. And uh, this is the last time I was ever in there, you know. But anyway, yeah. but on that, uh, that, I remember that, that series was very good. It's on houses in Ireland. And That's I think Mike Murphy did that. It was good for those. I remember, I think David Norris did one. Um, and that was a fairly recent one now. That's well, about 10 years ago you were talking about. Oh, no. Quite... Maybe just the big houses. No, I go back thirty years now. There was yeah. a house a program done. Uh, anyway. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe maybe it wasn't David Norris. To somebody, um, be thirty thirty five years ago. Because I remember Glenn was on it. Uh, Glenn Castle. Well, this one I remember. I think uh, I'm nearly sure this is Mike Murphy did the narration on it. I could be wrong, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They did yeah. go to Greenmount House, I remember, and showed us the size of the windows. That they weren't very elaborate windows. And mm. about these new aluminium windows, they were unusual at the time. They were being used in it. In the it's, just, it, it's a problem you could do again now because. Of course, this. Yeah. Of yeah. But you see, they're doing. They're going to the wrong kind of houses, and they're going to, they're going to big houses that everybody kind of knows about, like we said, Drumall, and then uh, yeah. the houses that, that we know about. But then there are actual houses that people don't. There, there was one up lately now. I saw it up in, on Facebook, which I answered actually. It was a lovely house up there called Cangart, above the Shinron. Yeah. 
and um, that's a magnificent house. There's all little quirks inside me. You were there. I was a few years ago. God, yeah. it was about 40 years ago. And mm. funny enough, on, on, I got up an email on, uh, no, I didn't really believe the first, that there was a talk on Zoom, which I missed on last Thursday night uh, by a group I never heard of, the Ara Historical Society, based roughly around um, kind of north, between Nina and Killaloo. And yeah. there was a talk given on Francis Space uh, of Derry Castle, who was the man, yeah. of course, that, that uh, was famous as the big timber importer. But on this notice, I went to the site then on the internet and I found the site of the Arab Historical Society and there's a picture on it and nothing written down about the photograph that the girl that gave the talk was using. Mm. And the picture, I recognised it straight away. And I'd love to know if anyone else would recognise it. It was a picture, you find it now in the Arab Historical Society, yeah. A-R-R-A. -R -R -A. Yeah. And, uh, it's a picture of, I know exactly what it was taken from. It was taken from the grass of poor man's Kilkey uh, down, uh, down in the, the Keys below. Yeah. And what she was showing in the picture was uh, the back of what used to be spades. It was really where the glass department was. Yeah. Uh, and on the wall is written a huge, I remember as well, it would be now the entrance into the back of Duns if you were driving yeah. into Duns. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all around that wall was written Francis Spade in huge letters all around the wall. Yeah. And the picture is showing you up lower Bedford Road, Bedford Road, right up along Thomas Street. Yeah. But to look at the picture, you would never bull's notion where it was taken. If you weren't yeah. from Newark especially, you know, yeah. you would never clue. Yeah. And where it was taken from, the angle, there's, I'd say it was taken about 900 or 1900. There are people just watching, and they're watching a crane, which you can just see on the right hand side, a small little piece of a crane, mm. which was obviously working on, I think, was working on the building of Limerick Boat Club. All right. It would have been working yeah. on. Now, yeah. I could be wrong on that, but to look at the picture, so I just put down. I answered, there was no comments down or anything about it. I just put down mm. it. This picture is taken of, uh, of Lord Bedford Row and, mm. uh, and looking right up Bedford, Bedford Row into Thomas Street in Limerick behind the new door. Or Howley's Key. I said, this is Howley's Key, which it was. That was Howley's Key there. But there, uh, was a, there was a Meads Key there as well, besides it. What, 12 of them, all separate. Oh, yeah. Honan's Key and Howley's Key. Yeah. Honan's Key, yeah. Steamboat Key. Yeah, you lots of them. Meads Key, Meads Key was named after a fella, I think Lenahan says it. Uh, he was, Mead had a, a ferry across the Shannon, and he was put out of business when the bridge was oh, built. When the Shannon Bridge, when they built Wesley Bridge. Yeah. Bridge, that's, yeah. yeah. That's, bridge. Well, that's right, he does. I remember that. Because yeah. you forget yeah. that, how would you get across it? But some yeah. people would have, would have would have went around to me, to me yet. But then you get back to tolls, whether they're paying tolls or not. Because yeah. the money, then I was only reading the other night and the tolls coming in. We'll do something about that some night, about the toll boxes that were in the break. Because people mm -hmm. constantly think that the toll booth is where the statue of, um, of the 1916 memorial was. It wasn't. It was at the other side of the bridge. Because yeah, the there is an arms print showing you, you can see the top of, he stood up on the toll boat, whoever took French probably when he took it, taking the oh, plane. Yeah. And he yeah. was able to take Sarsfield Bridge at an angle from roughly where Jewry's Hotel or whatever you call it now, was staying so many nature strand, looking yeah. over the bridge. So he obviously oh. put the tripod on the toll boat. Where was the toll boat? There, was... on, on the end of the bridge, at the, at the far side, at the clear side of Sarsfield Bridge. Opposite the Strand Hotel, roughly, where the 1916 memorial is there. Yeah. You yeah. know, the, the, the corner of O'Callaghan Strand. Yeah. yeah. The whole book yeah. was there. Taken to Actually, the I think there was something in the, was the Olympic Journal or the, or the Tolman Journal, the North Munster Journal, about when they were excavating there. I think it was Michael Dunnan wrote about it. You know, there's little bits they have about when they were excavating for the bridge or... For, yeah, yeah. That, that they found remains of a building which they reckon was the toll boat. No. No. Did you catch, they, they, they wanted you before we went to cross the bridge. They wanted to catch you first. Think about it, you know. Oh, yeah. No. No, maybe, no, no. He, he said they found the remains of something, but I I, I thought maybe it might be the toll bridge, but uh, no. the toll boat. No. Because the, 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 the swivel bridge was there. It's a pity. What a pity that's not 
that's not working, you know. Yeah. It could be yeah. really tourist attraction to it, you know. I, was, uh, I remember discussing with John O'Connor one time. Uh, anybody who knows the Bucket Pub. Yeah. And people were like, why did they build a, a pub so close to the road? Yeah. But that was the toll house for the bridge. Well, was, yeah. Funny, I only came across his death sat now the other day um, at John O'Connor's. Uh, O'Kelly. The yeah. name was written over the door for years. That's then. right. O'Kelly yeah. was written uh, the loan that they the, 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 the book at the pub there on the bridge. Oh, you forget he was that. He, he, was all, he was all killed, wasn't he? Okay, yeah. 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 Written yeah. on the wall. And yeah. uh, there's his full address in the dead set. We get in. Mm. Um, it's quarter past nine. It's time. Right. It's, 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 it's quarter to nine. So I'm looking around. Yeah. The We're talking yeah. over an hour at the stage anyway. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll have to go back and trace how we sat there off with St. Bridget and ended up on the toll house. <laughs> <That's, laughs> <yeah. laughs> I, I should mention again, I get killed for not mentioning. Uh, this is, we're talking on behalf of the, the Limerick Historical Society. And this point is kind of looking for members now with this, the times you're in. God is good for the, for the, for the fine weather to come in and get rid of this, 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 this virus. But um, if you want to play this or play it back or tell people about it, you can find it on learmedia.tv or on learmedia TV. Check it up, you'll find it on one of the channels anyway. Or they should be up on the Limerick Historical Society. We'll get them all up on that because they should be on the, that is the, the society's, uh, the, the Limerick Historical Society website. Right. You know, yeah. the ending. And don't forget to subscribe and click the little red button down in the corner if you're interested. Yeah. And tell people about us and let people know that we're out there. Because, uh, and this, well, we hope that in a couple of weeks they might be going out live and at a certain time so that people will know what time they can watch it at. If there's anything you want us to talk about or anything just to take us to task or anything, get in touch with us through, get through the websites. Uh, Lyric Historical Society, or if there's something you want us to talk about, or anything you want to add, because we believe it or not, we don't know it all. You know, we're, we're, we're learning nearly every day. You know, there's so many things we could talk about. We could be waffling here for another another hour. And if there's something in particular you want us to talk about, let us know. Okay, yeah. so again, Tom, thank you for coming on thank again you. and for coming up with me. And we we'll, okay. we'll have to figure out and when I go home I'll try and figure out how we got from, from St. Bridget to washing machine and the washing machine but and to cookery programs and to all house. Yeah, yeah. The next thing to Tom I have to figure out is how to walk this little uh, this little thing. So yeah. thank you out there and good night to all and thanks for watching. Good night. Good night.